Hi guys, uh, welcome to my dining room table where I'm going to be doing a demonstration uh, in watercolor for you tonight. Um, first off, I, I hope that everybody is doing well. Um, I miss being in the classroom, uh, but it's been nice to see your names popping up in the classroom. I want to I appreciate everybody getting back to me and letting me know um, what they have or don't have in terms of painting materials. Uh, Wednesday, I sent out an email tonight. Uh, Wednesday, uh, I, I'll be at the school between one and three o'clock uh, to hand out some materials. I wanna show you what I'm gonna hand out. Um, those of you that don't have painting supplies, um, we'll get a bag like this, your name will be on it. Um, there's a watercolor set inside. I have a paintbrush inside the watercolor set and also some paper. Uh, there's some thicker paper here and also a piece of illustration board, which is really thick. It's like cardboard. Uh, I've tested this paper out. It holds the watercolor pretty well. Not all copy, copy paper doesn't hold watercolor very well, so this paper is, is, is pretty good stuff. Um, if you do have a watercolor set but you don't have paper, I do have bags made up for everybody else with a brush in it. Um, and also the, the paper here. We're working pretty small. This paper should get you through the end of the year. Uh, we've had three projects uh, to do between now and, and the end of the year. So if we're out all this time, um, you'll have all the materials that you're gonna need to get to June. So today's project is uh, to paint an object. Uh, this is an object that has some, that a sentimental value um, you, you associate with a significant moment or memory in your life. I ask you to uh, send me a photograph of that object uh, that you're going to use for reference. Uh, if you haven't done that already, I, I would like you to do that. Um, please put a filter on it, make it black and white. Uh, we need a black and white so that you can really see the values very clearly because we're going to be focusing on value, which is the lightness or darkness of color for this project. You can see my sample right here. Uh, I used the uh, metal, uh, finisher's metal that I got from the Boston Marathon in 2016. I, this, this has been painted in uh, instant coffee, which I'll talk to you a little bit about here. Um, but you can see that I cropped in very closely on it. Um, I chose this object because it has that significance to me, but also it's, it's simple enough to draw that I don't get hung up on the drawing too much, but it's complex enough that I can see a range of light to dark values. You really want to have a nice range of value um, with this painting. I've been testing out different materials, uh, thinking about alternatives. Uh, this is a value scale that I did with instant coffee. This is the value scale I did. I was actually using charcoal from a fire pit. So there are, you know, there are things out there that can substitute for paints. I would say if you didn't have, you know, if you don't have instant coffee, there's even food coloring. You can add a little food coloring. The higher concentration of the food coloring, the darker your color is gonna be. The more water you add to it, the, the lighter the color, the lighter the value is gonna be. Just a couple other things to share with you real quick. Watercolor, you know, this is, this is a pan. The watercolor comes in here. Um, watercolor also comes in liquid form. These are watercolors I use to make um, my own paintings. Uh, this watercolor comes out liquid. And let's see, I, I actually just squirt the watercolor out on this, this tray right here. Um, I was doing some painting over the weekend. This is kind of dried now, but I can, it just re rehydrates. You add a little bit of water to it and it comes back to life. They make watercolor pencils as well. You can draw. These are kind of nice to use also. The painting that I was working on over the weekend, I, I brought that down to share with you as well. It's not finished yet, but I had gotten a commission to do a, a, a painting of a Civil War soldier. That was someone's ancestor. This is an old family photo. Uh, it was black and white or sepia. Um, and I'm bringing color into it. But the process that I use, you know, it's realistic. The process I use for this is 
pretty much the same process that I'm going to show you today. It just takes a there's a lot of values, um, and it's built up um, to achieve that that level of realism. All right, so I'm going to give you guys the full demonstration today. Uh, for this week, what I'd like you to try to do is draw out your the the object that you're drawing, get the line drawing done, and then I'd like you to um, experiment a little bit with light, medium, and dark values. If you could achieve a light, medium, and dark value, that would be that would be great. We're going to save the actual painting of the object till next week. Um, this is this disgusting plate right here. Uh, this is the instant my instant coffee plate. <laughs> I made some instant coffee in a coffee mug. And what I did is when I use the instant coffee directly, there's a lot of instant coffee and not a lot of water. When I use it directly, I find um, that it's still a little bit too light in value. Water lightens the color. So what I did is, and there's some coffee grounds here because I was experimenting with coffee grounds. But what I did is I poured a little bit of the instant coffee out on the plate. And then after a day or so, it, it dried and made this puddle, um, which I can rehydrate. And now it's going to be really high concentration of, of color. So it'll be pretty dark. Um, here are the, is the watercolor set. So I want to show you just real quick, um, light, medium, and dark values. Here's going to be my instant coffee. And here is my watercolor. All right, so I get a big jug of water and I start working with the paint or the coffee here. Start getting some of that pigment come up. And then I'm gonna paint this, it's gonna be my dark box over here. So I paint it and I, again, I'm trying to use as much pigment as I can to fill in that space. A lot of color. And what you notice is it's still not that dark. It's not as dark as, you know, the values that I have in here. Because I'm going to have to layer it. I'm going to have to let that dry and then I'm going to have to go over it again uh, to darken it up. But while I'm at it, I can go ahead and paint my middle value. So I add a little bit more water and pushing it around a lot. The other thing you're going to want to have on hand is some paper towel. If you find the color is too dark, you can always take some of the color and wipe it out on the paper towel and then just continue painting with it. This time, because this is my, my final square, I'm going to try to make sure that it's a little bit more blended, a little more even. Then I'm going to get a lot more water. Test it out on the paper, see what it looks like. Looks light enough. Push it around. Sometimes with the lighter, with, with a lot of water, you got to kind of work it into the paper a little bit more. So it kind of puddles at first. Wipe it out on the paper towel. I need to get rid of some paint. Or coffee okay and there we go light medium dark not as dark as I'd like it to be but I'm gonna go over it again okay I'm gonna show you the same thing with the watercolors now if you want you can mix the watercolor paint in the lid or if you have a different kind of set you could get a plate as well and mix on there I'm gonna use uh, let's use violet violet's kind of a dark color already if I needed to darken this up more, I could always add a tiny bit of black, but be careful how much black that you add because it will get really dark really fast. Adding the paint, mixing it up, creating a little wash. That's what we call the mixture of paint and water. Painting in my dark value. This is going to be the basic expectation for this painting, just to see, you know, that you've achieved a light, medium, and dark value. If you can take it further and you can get a range of values in between that, that would be fantastic. 
thinking at the, you know, the, the basic sort of levels, try to paint your object with light, medium, and dark values. All right, so you can see, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it needs to be a little darker, get a little more paint, add it to the wash, add it to the puddle. And you notice one thing that I'm kind of being careful of touching the one wet area to the other wet area. I'm leaving this little gap of white paper. Um, if it touches, it's gonna bleed from one into the other. So I don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna be careful to, to keep them separate. Then I'm gonna get a little more water. This time I'm gonna add the water to the tray that's right next to it. This is gonna be very light in value. So I'm gonna add some of the purple to that. Very light wash. Paint it. Spread it up, get it nice and smooth. Okay, so I wanted to demonstrate for you how I would paint an object um, and just talk about some of the things that are going through my mind. Like I said, this is gonna happen for you next week. So this week, just drawing out your object, practicing a light, medium, and dark value with the watercolor or the coffee, if you're painting with the coffee, next week we'll be painting it. So you can see I did a very simple, Kind of long line drawing I thought I could paint this pretty quickly um, I've mixed in here I've mixed the light medium and dark value and I'm going to start with those if you can establish your light medium and dark values then you can find all the other values that are in between there all right so first I'm going to start kind of going along the edge here turn your paper so this ball the light is coming from this way and it's casting a shadow out there I'm painting that edge, trying to keep a nice sharp edge. I'm gonna have the shadow kind of go out from there. And then I wipe out my brush, grab some of this paint, jump to the middle value. And before this dries, I'm gonna to try to hit that edge and keep this thing going. Because I want a soft edge, I want a soft transition. You got two kinds of edges. Um, in watercolor you've got well two kinds of edges in painting you've got soft edges and you've got hard edges um, where the shadow goes from light to dark is, is a soft edge and where the dark edge meets it meets the background that's that's a hard edge there soft edge hard edge so you can see now i've, I've kind of I've put the middle value in and i'm actually with the the light I'm just painting with water right now and I just keep the water and I kind of keep pushing this pigment and you see it's getting lighter all the way around the outside um, to make this final and I've got a pretty nice shadow to make this final transition I'm just gonna wipe out some of the paint in my brush and I'm gonna kind of feather this edge to leave that highlight there now that looks, that looks okay. I, I could go over it again, um, but you get the sense of, of roundness to the form. Okay, and for the last little demo, I'm going to show you the, the same thing with the coffee, but I'm going to try to, maybe I'll just stick to the ball and make it pretty quick. Um, you can rinse this out. You can rinse out the lid of the watercolor. Just, you know, pop this thing out, rinse that out in the sink with a sponge and, and clean that out. Um, best if you're, uh, not using the watercolors for a little bit, leave the lid open so it can it can dry out. So it doesn't, if there's water and you close it up and it's wet, it's gonna turn this stuff to like kind of a soupy material. All right, so it's coffee again. Same thing, kind of going in here with the dark. Looks like I'm picking up some of those coffee grounds. It's okay, they'll brush off. I'm just gonna use water at this point, hit this edge. Try to get a softer edge around that highlight. All right, so that's it. Uh, thank you very much if you made it to the end of my video. This is my first uh, videos that I'm making here, so it's a, it's a little awkward, but um, I hope that it's helpful and I plan on doing it again for you in the future when we move on to uh, our next couple of projects. So.
Thank you. Take care and have a good week.